Make sure to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Jeff Passett and Jessica Mendoza in. Uh, Jeter did go on to say, I think this is important, that, that he had seen, as we all have, uh, people suggesting that when they were in Atlanta, maybe the guys went out to bars and clubs and all of that. Jeter strongly refuted that notion. He was saying, yes, they got lax in some of their protocols, but it wasn't like they were out there doing things that were, like, super irresponsible. So I, I just thought that was important to get in. That said, Jeff, what does the league's response to the Marlins and now the Cardinals' outbreaks tell us about what we should expect for the remainder of this season? What do you think? I think that honestly, this is something that's going, we're going to see it again in another team. I hate saying that, but you get one player and that's what jumps out to me so much is we've now seen it with two teams in a week mm -hmm. where one player has it. And then the next thing you know, you blink and overnight five, six, seven players get it. And I think even, even talking with Mike Schilt, the Cardinals manager, everyone realizing how quickly this can spread. And that's something I, I feel like we're going to see continued throughout the MLB season. Jeff Pass and I, I did a bunch of radio appearances yesterday, and everyone asked me the same question. Is there any chance for baseball to move into a bubble? Is there any chance at this point, or is it too late, for baseball to look at these circumstances, say, this is not really viable, there is, and, and, and find some other abbreviated or, or adjusted bubble, maybe not exactly what the NBA is doing, but something more significant than what they have now? Just get a bubble together if you want the sanctity of October to exist. Yeah, I mean, the NBA is showing. It doesn't make any difference where you put the bubble. They're in Florida. The numbers there are terrible, but they're, that's the purpose of the bubble. So, Jessica, we have to get to the postseason for that plan to work. And so I guess I would just ask you, and I'm all for just let's, let's deal with this the best we can and make the best of every bad situation. But if one team has played five games and other teams have played 12 games and we sort of work our way through that, <laughs> Uh, how, how viable is this season in your mind? You know, I mean, it's, it's viable. It'll, it'll, it'll happen. I think what I have concern with is we're hearing teams say that they'd be okay with a winning percentage at the end of the regular season. But once we get there, I mean, you look at the Miami Marlins and how many games that they've missed. Let's say that they're a team that ends up with a higher winning percentage because they've played such a significantly lower amount of games and they could get into a playoff spot over another team that's played a lot more games and we all know is a better team. So I think when we get to the end of the season, yes, we want to get there. There's so many things that have to happen. But the reality is, is we are going to see at least a handful of teams not be able to play their 60 games. And I believe, Greeny, it's going to be a lot less. So now we go to that winning percentage. And I just feel like there's going to be so many arguments and so many questions of how viable is that? on who gets in and who doesn't. Yeah. I, I'm, look, it's, I'm, I'm with you. If one team plays 60 and another plays 58, that's one thing. If one team plays 60 and someone plays 42 games, that's an entirely different thing. Quickly, Jessica, we just saw the terrible injury um, and, and, and as I was leading into you guys here, and I know that's one of the things that you have on your mind this morning is just what feels like a proliferation of injuries. Greeny, I'm watching that Mets-Braves game yesterday, and you have a third of the Mets lineup that, that goes down with Jeff McNeil, Ahmed Rosario, Robin Scano. None of the, the injuries seem to be huge or significant right now, but you're still seeing huge impact players. And then as I'm watching the game, Mike Soroka, as you talked about, torn right Achilles. And as soon as he went down to the ground, I mean, my heart broke because we're talking about the significance Sorry. and the exaggerated importance of these injuries and just the reaction. It's, it's a huge deal right now. No question about it. All right, Passon, once again, I, I, I charged you with getting a season started, and you did it. Now I'm charging you with getting the playoff bubble done. All right, that's your job. That's your, that, get up has assigned you that yeah. responsibility, okay? <laughs> you're going to get, Jeffrey, you've got to promise me, you're going to get the playoff bubble done. I, okay. Okay, fair, good. That's, that's on record. Jessica, you heard it. He agreed to do it. No problem. Get Manfred on the phone. We'll have this thing ironed out by the end of the day. Yep. All right, guys, thank you.